Hello and welcome. Pastor John here. Welcoming you back to our uh, Going Through the Bible series. And today we are going to be looking at the prophet Haggai. And our passage is from the book of Haggai. So please open your Bibles and turn to Haggai chapter 2 verses 3 to 5. Haggai Haggai, book of Haggai, chapter 2, verses 3 to 5. And here, and here we read. Does anyone remember this house, this temple, in its former splendor? How, in comparison, does it look to you now? It must seem like nothing at all. But now the Lord says, Be strong, Zerubbabel. Be strong, Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people still left in the land. And now get to work, for I am with you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. My spirit remains among you, just as I promised you, promised when you came out of Egypt. So do not be afraid. God bless you, your verse word. Be strong. For I am with you. So a little bit of background here to this passage. Um, this is, if you had been reading, following along the series, um, uh, there is a um, link here to the um, to the book of um, Nehemiah and the book of Ezra. Ezra and Nehemiah, as the people are returning from the Babylonian exile. So if you want to see, understand how those books work together, read the book of Haggai as well. Read the book of Haggai anyways, because um, there's a lot a lot of encouragement, it's admonishment um, in Haggai, so it's worth uh, reading this, um, um, not just to, you know, for the sake of being in the Bible, but also to learning, seeing how all these things fit together. All right, so the background here, um, Haggai is uh, God's servant, his prophet, in 520 BC, Haggai receives four prophetic messages, four messages from God, to encourage the returning exiles to rebuild the Jerusalem temple, God's house. So the topic is for us is understanding what it means that God is with us, that God is with us. So that's what we're looking at. And... Um, so we go to verse 3 and we see that there's a contrast here. What happened was um, when, the, um, when the Babylonians came, I mean, as the exile began, as the exile began in five, 586 BC, um, uh, um, uh, over, overran the land, uh, the temple was destroyed. Uh, Solomon's uh, original temple, the first temple was destroyed. So they're building the second temple here. So there's a contrast here. And um, compared uh, with that temple, which was, um, um, yeah, based on the biblical description, uh, astonishing and very, uh, you know, magnificent from, a, from, a, from an earthly point, the second temple doesn't seem to be uh, as significant, or it may even seem minuscule in contrast. So that there's a contrast here. And however, um, what matters is God's perspective and how God sees things. Remember, be, it says, be strong, for I'm with you. So it doesn't matter really um, uh, to God as long as the a temple is being built. So Zerubbabel here is the governor and Jeshua is the priest, and all you people are the people in Jerusalem, the Hebrew people, the Israelites, and G and God says, "Be strong, be strong, be strong, be strong." Repeatedly, why? Because God's promises, for I am with you. So in verse five, that's a this is a big one. In verse five, um, we see that God's Holy Spirit is with them. And um, in the in Old Testament times, the Holy Spirit was um, um, 
not poured out on all people. Um, as, as we know in Pentecost, in, um, in Acts chapter 2, but was um, um, uh, only, only with, you know, uh, as God chose to reveal the Holy Spirit to uh, certain people, especially his prophets. Um, so that's a big one here. So the promise is that God's Holy Spirit is with them. And uh, this promise is then fulfilled when, when Jesus arrives on the scene. Uh, Jesus is conceived, he's born uh, of the Holy Spirit. How that all works, we do not know. The Bible doesn't tell us the how, but we know the that. So Jesus is born sinless. Well, that's a very big, uh, important thing to understand. And so um, after his death, after Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and ascension, um, Jesus releases the Holy Spirit to all believers. So anybody who will come to Jesus with a surrendered, repentant, uh, humble, obedient heart. So Jesus um, then becomes God's eternal temple. And so we can see this um, as we read in the New Testament um, when Jesus clears the temple. So <coughs> um, it, it appears uh, Jesus um, clearing the temple appears in different uh, gospel records. And here we're going to be looking at John chapter 2, verse 13 to 22. If you want to follow along, I encourage you, uh, open your Bible, go to the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verse 13 to 22. So, John, chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. And we read, it was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, and doves for sacrifices. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and cattle, scattered the money changers' coins over the floor, and turned over their tables. Then, going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, Get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Then his disciples remembered this prophecy from the scriptures. Passion for God's house will consume me. But the Jewish leaders demanded, What are you doing? If God gave you authority to do this, show us a miraculous sign to prove it. All right, Jesus replied. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. What? they exclaimed. It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you can rebuild it in three days? But when Jesus said this temple, he meant his own body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this, and they believed both the scriptures and what Jesus had said. God bless the reading of his word. So we see here the movement from a physical temple, from a building, to our Lord Jesus Christ, um, who is the temple uh, himself, right, in that sense, as the Bible tells us. So what does it mean for, for, for you and for me and for all of us to take courage in the Lord and to be strong? What does it mean for you and me and all of us to take courage in our Lord Jesus Christ and to be strong? So it means that we follow God's word and God's commandments. It means to embrace God's faithful promises. Um, God says, for I am with you. So... We are called to embrace God's faithful promises, all the words of the Bible, right? It means also turning to Jesus directly at all times, especially at times when we feel overwhelmed, afraid, weak, um, uncertain, frail, and helpless, or when we go going through grief, um, you know, the passing of a, of a loved one or a person who is near and dear to us. And we, oftentimes we may think, you know, you and I, we all may, th oh Lord, why, why did this happen? Don't you love me anymore? And the, the truth is, um, 
we 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 all go through these emotions and feelings, but we um, at, especially at those moments is uh, the, the, that's the time to turn to God in another way. And again, our emotions and feelings may be very strong, and it may be challenging for us. Um, we can also ask the Holy Spirit to pray for us as believers. But the enemy, the devil, doesn't stop uh, just because uh, you know we're going through some uh, you know persecution, personal hardship, grief, or whatever. He wants us to turn away from God. Satan wants always wants us to turn away from God, and so he can use uh, uh, such moments um, um, to uh, to try to turn us away from God. So the best thing we can do is to turn turn to God. As challenging and as, as painful and as hard as it may be, but that's when God wants to call us to call out to Him as believers, Abba Father. Um, and yes, God still loves us, no matter what. Just and and you and me, no matter what the challenge may be. So always take that to heart. It may not look like that. It may not feel like that. It may not be like that. But <clears throat> may we heed our Lord Jesus Christ here as he encourages us in John 14, verse 1. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.